الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد in our previous classes we're discussing the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to al-ulu with regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being high and lofty high and lofty in his essence uluhu fi dhatihi subhanahu wa ta'ala and high and lofty in his status and rank and his honor and nobility wa uluhu fi qadrihi subhanahu wa ta'ala and likewise his high and loftiness and his authority and command and his power subhanahu wa ta'ala uluhu fi qahrihi so the high and loftiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the highness and the loftiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in three aspects. Ulu al-dhati wa ulu al-qadr wa ulu al-qahr. We have discussed a number of affairs with regards to this and that Allah, He is the most high, subhanahu wa ta'ala in every aspect. In every aspect and Him Himself, and He Himself, He is the most high. And likewise from the specific aspect of His loftiness, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that He had rose above the throne in a manner befitting his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala ar-rahman ala al-arsh istawa ala al-arsh istawa and he rose above the throne in a manner befitting his majesty and from here we're discussing the narration of al-imam malik rahimahullahu ta'ala when he was asked about this affair and his response was a great response and derived from that is a great principle and how to understand with these attributes and deal with individuals who have misunderstandings in them. And he was asked about how the istiwa is, and yani the kaif, the kaif which we have learned is something that is unknown and we're not able to realize and we're not able to comprehend and something that Allah, he has not informed us of. And the proper response and understanding of how these attributes are is كَمَا يَلِيكُ بِجَلَالِهِ وَعَظَمَتِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى In the manner befitting His glory and His majesty, subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how they are. As for that reality, we do not know. Allahu a'lam al-kayfiyya. Allahu a'lamu bi kayfiyyati sifatihi, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We just believe that they are in a manner befitting His majesty. They are in a manner befitting His majesty. But whenever a person of deviation he asks, he asks as if he, he's, in, in, he's, a, he's asking as if he's trying to figure it out or trying to understand or trying to comprehend or trying to use his intellect and his mind to reach this reality and that is not possible nor it is allowed. That is not possible nor is it allowed. Rather it's from the greatest means of deviation that will lead a person to misguidance and disbelief. So Imam Malik he was asked about this affair, Ar-Rahman. How did he rise above the throne? Imam Malik, he became very angry and he took his time and uh, he answered and he mentioned The how is not understood. It cannot be comprehended. There's no way for us to realize this affair and know. And this is based upon a principle we had discussed in the previous class. And that is That that to speak about the attributes, this is based upon or stemming from speaking about the essence. So just as we believe that Allah, He has a that, that Allah, He has an essence, and it's not like the essence of anything in the creation. It's perfect with no deficiency or no defect whatsoever. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, His life is perfect with no deficiency and no defect whatsoever. His existence and His essence, His life is perfect with no deficiency or defect whatsoever. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, the same way we believe in this issue here then likewise we believe, we believe in the attributes that he has affirmed for himself subhanahu wa ta'ala without resembling them to anything in the creation the same way we believe that his essence and his life and his existence does not re does not resemble the essence nor the life or existence of anything in the creation likewise all of his attributes subhanahu wa ta'ala they do not resemble anything in the creation they do not resemble anything in the creation therefore laysa kamithri he say so the answer here is very beautiful. How did he rise above the throne? This cannot be comprehended. This cannot be comprehended. But then he went further to clarify, Rahimahullah, what is tiwa'u ghayru majhul? What is tiwa'u min hu ghayru majhul? And as for the word al istiwa and this attribute, this not unknown. This is something that is known. A ma'loom, meaning that in the Arabic language, this word is known. What, it, what the original meaning is, what the, what the, the, the word uh, originally means, this is something that is known. 
يعني أو استوى يعني ارتفع يعني على وارتفع meaning he rose he rose he elevated rose above the throne so this is something that is known the original understanding of that word and that attribute is well known in the Arabic language is well known in the Arabic language and that original understanding is established for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah he has affirmed that for himself but as for how it is then it's in a manner befitting the majesty of Allah azza wa jal this is something we are not able to comprehend and then he mentioned rahimahullah what iman bihi wajib what iman bihi wajib and to believe in it is an obligation and to believe in it and in the istiwa is an obligation because this is something that Allah he has mentioned about himself subhanahu wa ta'ala wallahu azza wa jal asdaqu qilan wa hadithan Allah azza wa jal he is the most truthful in his speech and his statement and he is the most knowledgeable of himself and of other than him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, he is the most knowledgeable of himself and the most knowledgeable of his creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he has affirmed for himself this attribute. So therefore, it's an obligation to believe in it. What iman bihi wajibun. And as for asking about the reality of how it is, this is not allowed. Rather, this is an innovation. It's something that the early generations from the noble companions, radiyallahu anhum, and those after them, from the tabi'een and the atzba'at tabi'een, they did not delve into these affairs. So he mentioned, rahimahullah, was su'aru anhu bid'ah. And to ask about this, how it is, is an innovation. Because the pious and the righteous generations, they never asked about how it is. Whether they accepted that reality, that this is something that they're not able to comprehend, and it's something that they have been informed of from the Sadiq and Masduq and the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Noble Quran, and likewise in the authentic narrations, and they surrender and accept this. And this is something that is the beautiful way of a true believer. And it's been connected by Al Bukhari. From the narration of Muhammad ibn Shihab al-Zuhri, rahimahullah, from the greatest of the scholars of hadith. He died in the year 124. He mentioned, Min Allahi al-Risala, Min Allahi al-Risala, Wa ala al-Rasuli al-Balagh, Wa alayna al-Taslim, Wa alayna al-Taslim, Min Allahi al-Risala, the message is from Allah, Min Allahi al-Risala, the message is from Allah. The message is from Allah. Any of the revelation and the guidance and the light is from Allah. Min Allahi al risala wa ala nabi al balagh. And what is incumbent upon the Prophet is to convey the message. The message is from Allah, and the responsibility upon the Prophet is to convey that message as it was revealed to him. Wa alayna at taslim. Wa alayna at taslim. And what is upon us is to submit and to surrender and to believe and to follow. To believe and to follow. So whenever a person he sees the evidences and the proofs, and he sees the true reality that cannot be denied, Muhammad Rasulullah. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what he came with is the truth. And the Quran is the truth, and it's the speech of Allah, and it's the revelation, and, and it's guidance and light, and it's the final revelation, and it's guidance and light. And he realizes that what the Prophet وسلم, has come with is the truth and is, is the clear truth, then he must surrender and submit to that. Whether he realizes the wisdom behind these uh, legislative and sacred rights or whether he does not realize this. Whether he, or whether he does not realize this. Once he comes to the conclusion and he's guided to the true reality that there's nothing worthy of worship except for Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after this he must surrender and submit in entirety he must surrender and submit in entirety many of the affairs from the religion will be clear for him and he'll understand the wisdom behind many of the sacred rites and other aspects he will not understand and, he, and it's incumbent for him to surrender and to submit in every aspect, whether he understands the wisdom or not. So from the affairs that we are not able to comprehend nor understand the reality are, is the reality of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reality of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even there are issues in the creation we're, under, we're not able to understand the reality. Likewise, like the reality of the creation of of the jinn and the reality of the creation of of the angels even the reality and the creation of the of our own souls that are in between our sides and our own body we're not able to realize and comprehend that but we believe in it and we have no doubt in its existence and we have no doubt in its existence so in the same manner we have to submit uh, to these affairs min allahi ar risala from allah is the message wa ala nabi al balagh and the uh, and the responsibility of conveying that is upon the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayna at taslim and it's incumbent for us to submit to 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 submit 
and, and to surrender, to submit and to surrender. So this understanding here about Imam Malik, rahimahullah ta'ala, and this response with regards to kayf istawa, how did Allah rise above the throne? This is the response for every single attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How does he cake? If, if one were to ask about the face, or ask about the hands, or ask about the feet, or ask about the fingers, or ask about the eyes, or ask about the hearing, or, or the seeing, or the knowledge, or the mercy, or the love, or the anger, or the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, any of these attributes, any of these attributes, al muhabba wa rilba, wa bugd, wa ghalab, wa maqat, wa farah, wa rilba, all of these attributes that Allah has described himself with, the how, that the question of how they are is in the same answer. It's in the same answer. How they are with regards to Allah, it's not, it's not comprehensible. One cannot comprehend these affairs. As for the original meaning of these words, then these, these affairs are known. Then these affairs, they are known. And to believe in them is an obligation because Allah, he has affirmed them for himself and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has affirmed them. And to ask about how they are and to delve into this issue is an innovation not, and not allowed is an innovation and not allowed. So this is very important to, to understand with regards to all of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we continue reading now in the author. He says, وَنُؤْمِنُوا بِأَنَّهُ تَعَالَى مَعَ خَلْقِهِ وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ عَرْشِهِ يَعْلَمُ أَحْوَالَهُمْ وَيَسْمَعُ أَقْوَالَهُمْ وَنُؤْمِنُوا بِأَنَّهُ تَعَالَى مَعَ خَلْقِهِ وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ عَرْشِهِ يَعْلَمُ أَحْوَالَهُمْ وَيَسْمَعُ أَقْوَالَهُمْ وَيَرَى أَفْعَالَهُمْ وَيُدَبِّرُ أُمُورَهُمْ وَيَرْزُقُ الْقَثَقِيرُ وَيَسْمَعُ أَقْوَالَهُمْ وَيَرَى أَفْعَالَهُمْ وَيُدَبِّرُ أُمُورَهُمْ وَيَرْزُقُ الْفَقِيرُ وَيَجْبُرُ الْكَسِيرُ وَيُؤْتِي الْمُلْكَ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَنْزِعُ الْمُلْكَ مِمَّنْ يَشَاءُ وَيُعِزُّ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيُذِلُّ مَنْ يَشَاءُ بِيَدِهِ الْخَيْرُ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ he says, Rahimahullah ta'ala, and we believe that Allah the Most High, He was with His creation. He is with His creation while He is above His throne. He's with His creation while He is above His throne. And He knows their circumstances and He hears their statements and He sees their actions and He's disposing of their affairs and He is providing for the poor and destitute and he is uh, mending the broken and he aiding the one who was broken and down and out and he grants his dominion to whom he wills and he strips it from whom he wills and he honors whom he wills and he belittles whom he wills and all good is in his hand and he is able to do all things <laughs> And he says, Rahimahullah ta'ala, and the one who this is his affair, and he, this is his reality, that he is with his creation in reality, and he is above them, above his throne in reality. There's nothing like unto him, and he is the all hearing, and he is the all seeing. So here now the author, he's affirming the attribute of al-ma'iyya. The attribute of al-ma'iyya. The ma'iyya is from the word ma'a, which is in the Arabic language, a dharf and it means with. It means with. Al-ma'iyya, yani al-musahaba, that, that uh, Allah, he is with the creation. That Allah, he is with the creation. And this is an attribute that many of the deviant sects, they have misunderstood. And this is going back to some of the previous issues, likewise, that we have discussed with regards to the ulu, the ulu of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, He is with His creation. But we have already affirmed and seen that Allah, He is Al-Ali, Al-A'la, Al-Muta'al, that Allah, He is the Most High. That Allah, He is the Most High. And that Allah, Azza wa Jal, Bithatihi, Aliyun, Fawqa, that Allah he himself, he is the most high and he's high and lofty above his creation, above his throne. In a manner befitting his majesty, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we must understand what is intended from the ma'iyya, from the ma'iyya, that Allah is with his creation. Not meaning that he's mixed in the creation, not meaning that he's inside of the creation or part of the creation. Rather, he's with his creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala, by way of knowledge. That's what is intended here. That's what is intended here, that he's with his creation by way of knowledge. That we believe that Allah is with his creation. He's with his creation, the entire creation. The entire creation. 
while he's above his throne, he knows their circumstances. And in referring that this ma'iyah here is, is a, an ma'iyah ad ilmiyah. An ma'iyah ad ilmiyah. Or it's also known as ma'iyah ad ihata. Ma'iyatu ad ihata. That Allah, he is with the creation by way of his knowledge. He's encompassed the entire creation. He's with all of the, the creation, the good of them, the bad of them, the creation in entirety by way of his knowledge and by way of his hearing and seeing and his power and authority and command and his power and his authority and his command his knowledge has encompassed all things and likewise his uh, ability to see and to hear and his command and his authority and his power subhanahu wa ta'ala is encompassing the creation and with the creation in entirety in entirety he's disposing of their affairs He's disposing of their affairs. He, he, he knows their circumstances. He hears their statements. He sees their actions. He's disposing of their affairs. He's providing for the poor and needy. He is mending the one who was broken and down and out. Yuti and mulka man yasha. This is derived from a verse in Surah Al Imran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentioned, Quli Allahumma malik al mulk. Say to them, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah, He is malik al mulk. Oh Allah, you are, you are the king of the kingdom. You give the dominion to whom you will. That you grant the dominion, the, king, the kingdom, the, the, the authority and ownership to whom you will, and you strip it from whom you will. You honor and raise with might and respect whom you will, and you belittle and lower and humiliate whom you will. When your hand is all good, indeed you have the ability to do all things. You bring, you cause the night to go into the day and the day to go into the night time. Cause the living to come from the dead and the dead to come from the living. And you provide for whom you will without reckoning, without reckoning. This is from the rububiyyah of Allah Azza wa Jal, His Lordship and His authority and command. And from that, uh, likewise, is that He is with the creation. That He is with the creation. But He is with the creation by way of knowledge. But He is with the creation by way of knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentioned in, in His book, هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَامٍ ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْأَرْشِ that it is he who created the heavens and the earth in six days, and then he rose above the throne. And it's very suitable, the, the arrangement or order that the author is mentioning these attributes. And, and, and they have come in, in this manner in, in some of the texts. For example, this verse here in Surah in Surah Al-Hadid. هو الذي خلق السماوات والأرض في ستة أيام ثم استوى على الأرش. It is Allah. He is the one who created the heavens and the earth in six days. Then he rose above the throne. يعلم ما يرجو في الأرض وما يخرج منها. Allah. He knows that which goes into the earth and that which comes out. وما ينزل من السماء وما يعرج فيها. He knows that which comes down from the heavens and that which goes up. وهو معكم أينما كنتم. والله بما تعملون بصير. And Allah. He is with you wherever you may be. And Allah is the all-seer of everything that you do. So here, this portion of the verse, the people of knowledge have mentioned, clarifying this. And He is with you wherever you may be. He is with you wherever you may be. Meaning by way of His knowledge. Meaning by way of His knowledge. And this portion of the verse is preceded by knowledge and, and is sealed with knowledge. And He has come in between the, the affairs. So we should not misunderstand. But even that Allah is with you wherever you may be, meaning He's with us here on earth. Well, meaning he's with us here on earth. Abdullah ibn Mubarak, rahimahullah, he says, لا نقول كما يقول الجهمية إنه معنا هنا. We don't say that this means what the Jahmiyyah they say, that Allah, he's with us right here on earth. Meaning that Allah, he's with us by way of his knowledge. Meaning that Allah, he's with us by way of his knowledge. And that Allah, he mentioned this, سفر. يعلم ما يرجو في الأرض وما يخرج منها وما ينزل من السماء وما يعرج فيها وهو معكم أينما كنتم. Allah, he knows that which goes into the earth and that which comes out of the earth. And he knows that which comes down from the heavens and that which goes up to the heavens. And he's with you wherever you may be. And he sees everything that you're doing. And he sees everything that you're doing. So this ma'iyya, the fact that Allah is with you wherever you may be, by way of his knowledge and by way of his, his sight, by way of his hearing, 
by way of his power and authority, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another verse similarly like this, Allah, he mentioned, Alam tara anna Allah ya'lamu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard. Do you not see that Allah, he knows everything that is in the heavens and everything in the earth? Ma yakunu min najwa thalathatin illa huwa rabi'uhum, wa la khamsatin illa huwa sadisuhum, wa la adana min dalika, wa la akthar illa huwa ma'ahum ayna ma kanu. إلا هو معهم أينما كانوا ثم ينبئهم بما عملوا يوم القيامة إن الله بكل شيء عليم إن الله بكل شيء عليم. So Allah He mentioned in this verse likewise that do you not see that Allah He has He has knowledge of all things. ألم ترى أن الله يعلم ما في السماوات وما في الأرض. Do you not see? Do you not understand? Do you not realize that Allah he has knowledge, supreme, ultimate knowledge of everything in the heavens and the earth. There is no private council of three except for Allah is the fourth with them. And he meaning it is knowledge. He's aware of them and he knows and he hears. And no, no private council of five except for he's the sixth of them. And no lesser than that and no more. Except for he's with them wherever they may be. Except for he's with them wherever they may be. Then he will inform them about that which they did. On the day of resurrection, in Allah bi kulli shayin alim. Indeed, Allah, He has supreme, ultimate knowledge over all things, over all things. So here again, the issue, wa huwa ma'ahum ayna ma kano, and He's with them wherever they may be. This statement here is preceded by the issue of knowledge, and also closed by the issue of knowledge, and on both aspects. So Allah is mentioning His encompassing knowledge, and then He mentioned that He's with the creation wherever they may be, and then He closed the issue likewise by mentioning again His encompassing knowledge. So the fact that Allah is with the creation wherever they may be is by way of His knowledge. It's by way of His knowledge. And again, this is by understanding all of the text in one light, because we have already seen the evidence is clarifying that Allah, He Himself is above His throne above his creation in a manner befitting his majesty. He's not inside of the creation. He's not mixed with the creation. So therefore what is understood is he's with the creation by way of his knowledge. So this is the, the ma'iyah, any in general. The general aspect of the ma'iyah is called al-ma'iyah al-ammah. Al-ma'iyah al-ammah, also known as al-ma'iyah al-ilmiyah. Or ma'iyatu al-ihata, the general encompassing ma'iyah. And the fact that Allah is with the creation in entirety, all of them all of his creation and it's in his encompassing them by his knowledge and his hearing and his sight and his power authority and command subhanahu wa ta'ala but there's another aspect of the ma'iyah likewise it's called al ma'iyah al khassa al ma'iyah al khassa is the specific aspect of uh, of the ma'iyah and this is uh, the ma'iyah to al ta'yid wa al nusra uh, al ta'yid wa al nusra wa tawfiq and this is the ma'iyah of aid and support and help and guidance and blessing and this is specific for the believers specific for the believers at the head of them the prophets and messengers and those true and faithful believers who follow the prophets and messengers alayhim wassalatu wassalam that Allah is with them by way of aiding them and helping them and guiding them and protecting them and directing them and, uh, uh, and granting them victory over their enemies and aid and support in this life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned in his book, إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ مُحْسِنُونَ This is being, this is what is referred to, إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ Allah is with, the word مَعَ is coming here, إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ مُحْسِنُونَ That Allah he is with those who fear him, and those who are, 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 are good doers, and those who excel in, in their worship, their worship of the Creator and the dealings with the creation. Allah is with them. Allah is with them. Allah, He's with the entire creation, but He's with them specifically by aiding them and helping them and guiding them. So this is from the great barakah and blessing that comes from at taqwa wa ihsan by striving to be obedient to Allah, fulfilling the obligations first and foremost, and avoiding the prohibitions, and striving to perfect the worship of Allah Azza wa Jal, seeking the pleasure of Allah, and striving to perfect the dealings one has with the people, likewise, seeking the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. In this manner, a person is able to obtain the aid and support, and the help and guidance and the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, he mentioned, likewise, in, in the same light, to his noble prophets, Musa and Harun, whenever he sent them to Fir'aun, and they were afraid. 
they are afraid that uh, Fir'aun is going to transgress against them, overcome them, overpower them. And if they are too alone, going against Fir'aun and his army, and Allah, and Allah he sent them to them to call him, to call Fir'aun to the truth, and to advise him and admonish him, and to attempt to guide him and direct him to the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they said, we're afraid. We're afraid. We're afraid he's going to transgress the limits or go, go beyond the boundaries. He's going to violate our rights. We're afraid he's going to harm us. So Allah, he said to them, Do not be afraid. I'm with you. Do not be afraid. I'm with you. I hear and I see. And I hear all of the, the affairs and issues that's going on between you and your enemies, and I see you. Meaning, and I, and I will aid you, and I will help you, and I will guide you. لا تخافا إنني معكما إنني معكما أسمعوا وأرى. And likewise, this is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to Abi Bakr radiallahu anhu whenever they're in the cave. Whenever he is uh, afraid and they're surrounded by the enemies, and uh, Abu Bakr, he mentioned what he mentioned, radiyallahu anhu, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لا تحزن, إن الله معنا. Do not, do not grieve. Do not be afraid. Indeed, Allah is with us. Indeed, Allah is with us. Allah is with the, the entire creation. And that general aspect by way of his knowledge and his awareness and his hearing and his seeing and his power and his authority, but he's with the believers. He's with the believers specifically by way of his help and his guidance and his direction by way of his help and his guidance and his direction, and whomsoever Allah is with him, then no one can harm him. And no one can touch him, alhamdulillah. And his life it will be nothing but goodness and joy for him. And we hope to be from those whom Allah is with. And we hope to be from those who obtain the ma'iyah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala khasa. And the help and the aid and the direction and the guidance of Allah azza wa jil. And this comes first and foremost, barakallah fikum, from learning this creed from learning the proper creed and correcting one's belief system and his faith and then working in that knowledge to cultivate that faith in the heart until it produces the beautiful fruits of actions and submission and surrender to Allah Azza wa Jal that those deeds that are beloved to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala that will earn him his pleasure and, uh, and, and that will earn him his pleasure and likewise his aid and support his aid and, and support so this is uh, this is the ma'iyah uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's in, a it's in a general manner, and this is what the author is referring to here. And it's in a specific manner, and this is what we have, we have been discussing. So Allah, he's with the creation, uh, and while, while at the same time, he himself, he's above his throne. Allah, he himself, bidatihi, fawqa arshihi, fawqa, uh, fawqa arshihi, and mustawan ala arshihi ba'inun, من قلقه سبحانه وتعالى الله himself he's above his throne in a manner befitting his majesty separate from the creation separate from the creation as for the fact that he's with he's with us by way of his knowledge he's with us by way of his sight and his hearing he's with us by way of his power and authority and command سبحانه وتعالى and he's with those who believe and those who work righteous deeds and those who are strong and sincere in their faith by way of his aid help support and guidance so the author he says, "What I know, Kulu Kama to Kulu Hululi, Minal Jehmiya, Wagairi, Wagairu Hum, Inu Huma, Halki Hif Arden." We don't say like what the the Hululiya they say from the Jehmiya and those upon their way and the likes of them saying that Allah is with us on the earth. That's not what he means. That's not what he means. And he, and he rather, uh, what we say is what has preceded. Allah is with us by way of His knowledge. And he's with the believers by way of his knowledge and likewise by way of his help and guidance and blessing and favor and, and, and direction and help and aid. And as for Allah himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he's above his throne and a manner befitting his majesty. So he says, He says, and we believe that whoever said that then he's a disbeliever or misguided. That he's a disbeliever or misguided because he has described Allah with that which is not befitting for him from, the de from deficiencies, from defects and deficiencies. He's saying now we believe that Allah, he's with the creation by way of his knowledge while he himself is above his throne in a manner befitting his majesty. And we do not say that Allah is mixed in the creation. This is from the statements of the Jahmiyyah. The Haluriya, they say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the creation, he's mixed inside of the creation. And Allah fi kulli makan, that Allah is everywhere. That Allah is everywhere. We do not say that. This is what the Jahmiyyah they say. 
This is a false and a lowly creed. And this is describing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that which is not befitting. And we mentioned in our previous class that from the places of everywhere like a person's pocket. And from the places of everywhere, for example, in the bathroom, akramakum Allah. So to believe that, that your Lord that you worship who created you in the womb of you, the manner that's known as in your pocket, billah, or in the bathroom, or in the worst, or, or those worst places, probably, probably in these neighborhoods around here, billah, that they claim their Lord is, that they claim their Lord is, and that Allah is in these places, that Allah is in these places. It's not befitting for Allah. Rather, he says, We believe that whoever said that, he's a disbeliever. Meaning this is a creed and statement of disbelief. To claim that Allah is everywhere, or that Allah is mixed in the creation, or that Allah is not above his throne, this is disbelief. This is clear disbelief, disbelieving in that which has been revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But when we look at the, the, the moderation in this ruling, and, and the wisdom of this imam, and uh, the, the balance in the affair, and not being hasty. He says, وَنَرَى أَنَّ مَنْ قَالَ ذَلِكَ أَنَّهُ كَافِرٌ أَوْ ضَالٌ we, we believe that the one who said that, he's a disbeliever or misguided. He's a disbeliever or misguided. And he's going to be one or the other. And he, meaning that the origin is that this is a statement of disbelief. But a person, maybe he has an excuse, so therefore the ruling of disbelief cannot be applied to him, so therefore he's misguided. So therefore he's considered misguided. So there are people who they make this statement and they have no excuse. And the proofs and evidences have been established against them and they reject them and deny them and they rebel stubbornly to hold fast to their creed and opinion. And this affair and the ruling of disbelief will be applied to them. Will be applied to them. And there are others who have been affected by these ideologies and the evidence and proofs have not been established against them. And they're mentioning what has been mentioned to them and they're saying what they have read in some books or heard some people saying and they are ignorant of this affair and they have not been in contact with the people of truth to clarify these realities properly and uh, therefore they make the likes of these statements. So this one, uh, he has an excuse and the ruling of disbelief cannot be applied to him directly until the evidences are established. So in any case, the person who makes the likes of these statements and has the likes of these creeds, either he's going to be one of these two. He's either a kafir, disbeliever, or a dhal, and if he's, a, if he's a Muslim, the origin is that he's a Muslim, and a person, the people of the Sunnah are the furthest of the people from declaring the Muslims disbelievers from declaring the Muslims disbelievers. So sometimes the person, he will make a statement of disbelief, yet disbelief will not be applied to him. A statement of disbelief, but disbelief will not be applied to him. A person, maybe he will fall into a statement or action of innovation, but the, the ruling of innovation will not be applied to him. Maybe a person, he will fall in, into some actions, uh, aspects of these uh, affairs of misguidance, but that, uh, that, that ruling will not be applied to him. Before the judgment, of uh, before the judgment of kufr or the judgment of bid'ah or the judgment of, of, of fisq and the likes of these affairs these rulings that will be applied to individuals that will take them out of islam or take them out of the sunnah or take them out of of piety and righteousness before these issues are applied to individuals there are conditions that must be met and there are prohibitors that must be lifted there are hunaka shurutun la budda min tawafuriha there are conditions that must be present before the ruling can be established and likewise there are prohibitors that must be lifted before the ruling can be established so the conditions and the prohibitors they must be uh, they must be there the conditions must be present and the pro prohibitors must be lifted if that's the case then the ruling will be applied to an individual the ruling will be applied to an individual. If that's not the case, then that ruling will not be applied to the individual. That ruling will not be applied to the individual. If the conditions are not met, maybe a person, he made that statement because of ignorance. He doesn't know. So it's incumbent to have knowledge. So from the condition of accountability is to have knowledge. Is to have knowledge. So if a person is ignorant and he does not know, then he has a, a type of excuse. And he, according to a situation, and this is just in general so that we understand. This is just in general so that we understand. Or maybe he grew up in a community or a society where he's surrounded by ulama asu. And this is all that they taught him. All they taught, all, all of the scholars in his land and all of his forefathers in his land and all of the masajid that he grew up in, all they told him his whole life, and Allah hafi kuli makan. 
and Allah fi kulli mikan. This is what they told him his whole life. Allah is everywhere. And they said, because, well, uh, well, this, Allah is everywhere because of this, this, and this. Or they said, So then he, they, they made the, this, this false interpretation, and that's all he heard his whole life. And that's what he said, the likes of what he heard. So this person now, if he comes in contact with the people of the Sunnah, the people of the Sunnah will not be hasty. Why not be hasty to declare him a disbeliever? Rather, they'll hasten to try to guide him and direct him and to help him away from that falsehood and to free him from this, uh, this incorrect ideology and this foul and lowly understanding by clarifying for him the evidences and mentioning for him the proofs and also clarifying for him the lowly way of that statement and the falsehood uh, of that creed, of that creed, hoping that he will be guided and, 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 and hoping to help him and to direct him, not hoping to, to establish a proof against him so one can drop him and be rid of him, and be rid of him. But after the, the clarification has come and he refuses to accept that, for example, maybe he sees the truth but he refuses to leave the ways of his forefathers, or he sees the truth and he does not accept it, or prefers the, the way that he was upon before, then uh, the dealings will be different. But in the beginning, whenever a person deals with the likes of these people, especially in these days, whenever ignorance is widespread throughout the Ummah, and, and the people of Sunnah are few, and, and uh, although the knowledge is widespread, still many doubts and deviations uh, are in the hearts of many of the believers and many of their communities, then a person who will be patient and forbearing and dealing with the misguided Muslims and dealing with those who are ignorant by striving to educate them and to help them and to direct them in the best manner and the way that one would like to be educated and directed if he were ignorant or if he had a creed that was corrupt in that manner. If he had a creed that was corrupt in that manner, how would he like to be directed and guided? How would he like to be shown the proper creed and the proper path? This is the way to call and to teach with gentleness, with kindness, with a beautiful intention, hoping goodness for them, hoping guidance for them, hoping blessing for them. And the likes like this, especially whenever the origin is that, that they're believers and they, and they believe in La ilaha illallah and Muhammad Rasulullah, they've only been affected by some of the deviant ideologies and they've been in the company of the deviant scholars and, and students of knowledge and the likes like this. So therefore a person of the Sunnah, uh, as, as Shaykh al-Islam, he mentioned, Ahl Sunnah, A'lamu nasi, this is such a beautiful statement that the people of the Sunnah they're the most knowledge they're the most knowledgeable of mankind with regards to the Creator and they're most and they're the most merciful of mankind with regards to the creation. That they're the most knowledgeable of the people with regards to understanding the Creator, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, and also because of that they're the most merciful of the people towards mankind and from the greatest mercy rather and, and the greatest mercy is to teach the people the tawheed and to call the people to the straight path and to clarify the the, the true belief and creed and understanding the understanding uh, of uh, of the deen of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as taught by prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as understood by the noble companions radiyallahu anhum so we don't say that. We don't say we don't say that what they say, and those who say what they say, we believe they're disbelievers, or if they have an excuse, then they're misguided. Then they're misguided. Then they're misguided. So then after this, the author he continues to discuss more of these attributes. Moving on to the next issue, the issue of a nuzul, the descent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, Says in the hadith is without a ya. In the hadith uh, that I'm familiar with, Wallahu Adam in Sahih Bukhari is without the ya. من يسألني فأوطيه من يستغفرني فأغفر له. Now the author he says, and we believe in what the what his messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم has informed us about him, and we believe in what his messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم has informed us about him that he descends every night to the to the lowest heaven إلى إلى السماء الدنيا. 
Sama dunya, the samawat, the heavens, there are seven of them. We have seen this, correct? Allah will be khalaqa sabaa samawatin. Wa mina ardi mithlahun. Wa mina ardi mithlahun. It is Allah who created the seven heavens. So there are seven of them. There are seven of them. And uh, the nearest heaven, Sama dunya, is the one that we see. Is the one that we see. And the ones that the ones that we see above our heads, and the ones that the scientists they're searching in with their telescopes, so on and so forth, and they claim that they're going there and their satellites, and they're looking beyond and beyond in this galaxy and that that and that galaxy. And this is the sama dunya. Above that, there's six more. Above that, there's six more. Above that, there's six more. And it's established likewise that the creation gets bigger, gets bigger. This is something science has established. It's something that we know likewise. From our uh, from uh, from our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because the greatest creation is the creation of the throne of the throne, and Allah and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he mentioned that uh, the throne compared to the seventh heaven is like is like uh, like the uh, that that uh, that the kursi compared to the seventh heaven is like a a ring halqa fi fi tulqa fi fi falat like a small ring cast in the desert. Cast in a desert, and this is the comparison. The seventh heaven, compared to the the courtesy, the courtesy of Allah, is like a small ring and cast in the desert, and the throne, compared to the courtesy, is like a small ring cast in the desert. And this is the example. And the heavens are like this. Each one is greater than the other, but in, 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 in a major, to a major extent, each one is greater. The the second heaven is greater than the, the first heaven, and the third one is greater than the second, all the way till till the seventh heaven. And then greater than that is the courtesy. Of Allah and greater than that is the Arsh of Allah. That's the greatest of the creation. The greatest of the creation. And above that is the most high and the most great. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we uh, we believe uh, we believe in these affairs that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has informed us about. And we believe that which his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has informed us about uh, that he Allah he descends every night into this nearest heaven into this nearest heaven and, when, and whenever the, the last third of the night remains whenever the last third of the night remains and this is actually uh, the text of the hadith this is the text of the hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna rabbana tabaraka wa ta'ala yanzilu. Yanzilu kulla laylatin ila samaa dunya. Hina yabqa thuruth al-layl al-akhir. That indeed our Lord, indeed our Lord, the Most High, He descends every night to the nearest heaven. Whenever there is the last third of the night remaining. Whenever the last third of the night remaining. Fayaqool. And He says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala man yad'uni. Who is calling on me so I may respond to him? Who is calling on me so I may respond to him? Who is asking of me so I may give him? Who is asking of me so I may give him? Who, and, and who is seeking my forgiveness so that I may so that I may forgive him? So that I may forgive him. So we believe in the the, the nuzul of Allah Azza wa Jal and that He descends in a manner befitting His Majesty in the last third of every night, in the last third of every night, and even with His descent, He's still above His throne in a manner befitting His Majesty. He's still above His throne in a manner befitting His Majesty. So now it's very suitable to refer back to that which we have discussed, the istiwa of Allah Azza wa Jal in the statement of Imam Malik, because these are affairs that we're not able to comprehend. And we affirm them because Allah has affirmed them for him and his messenger. And his messenger has affirmed them for him. So the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says, Inna rabbana, aw yanzilu rabbuna, yanzilu rabbuna kulla layla ila sama dunya. This is what our Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said. That our Lord, he descends every night to the nearest heaven. So somebody would say he doesn't descend. Would somebody be bold enough to say he doesn't descend? What do you have the billah? There's some people who are bold enough to say that. What do you have the billah from the deviant sex? From the deviant sex. Some of them they say, no, he doesn't descend. Why do they say that? Huh? Because they, they say that because they cannot comprehend any of these attributes except in that which they see and that which they know. Their minds can only comprehend likening the, the, these issues to the creation. So just as Allah, Azza wa Jal, we go back to the, this issue of a nuzul. What does a nuzul mean in the Arabic language? 
Nazala yanzilu, inzil nuzulan. What does that mean? Nazala, to come down. For example, nazala ta'ira. Right? The, the, the plane came down. You know how the plane comes down? Or nazala ta'ir, or the bird comes down. Right? Or for example, nazala arajul, an sulam. Right? The man, he came down the stairs. So planes come down, birds come down, men come down, stairs, you might come down and go outside. You're in, the, you're in your vehicle, you might come down out of the vehicle. Tanzil an sayara. For example, like this, or maybe you're in the tree and you drop a rock and the rock, nazala min, like this. Many things in the creation, they perform this verb, a nuzul. And all of them are different, correct? All of them are different. They all come down differently. They all come down differently. So we know what nuzul means. We know what nuzul means. And we know that this verb is uh, ascribed to many things in the creation. And all of them are different. And the way that it happens is according to what it's ascribed to. Huh? What it's ascribed to. Nuzul al-ta'ira. Nuzul al-ta'ira. Yakhtalif al-nuzul al-rajul. Mathalan. The way that a plane comes down is different than the way a man comes down. A plane comes down from the sky is different than the way he man comes down from the second story. Right? It's different. It's different. Okay, so according to what it's ascribed to, we we'll determine you need the reality of that affair. So here the nuzul is ascribed to Allah Azza wa Jal. So al kalamu fi sihat far'un an al kalami fi that. To speak about the attributes is based upon or stemming from speaking about the essence. So the same way we affirm the essence of Allah Azza wa Jal, we do not liken it to anything in His creation, and it's perfect. And it has no deficiency whatsoever. It does not resemble the essence of any of the essences in this creation. Then likewise, we affirm the nuzul for Allah Azza wa Jal. Without any deficiency. Without any deficiency or fault whatsoever. Not resembling the nuzul of anything in the creation. كَيْفَ يَنْزِلْ يَنْزِلُ رَبُّنَا نُزُولًا يَلِيكُ بِجَلَالِهِ وَعَظَمَتِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى Our Lord, He descends in a manner befitting His Majesty. We do not know how that is. And we do not ask how that is. To ask how it is, is an innovation. To say, how does he, how does he descend? How is he above his throne? How does he descend? The second, the first heaven, like this, if it's, if it's the last third of the night in Saudi Arabia, then it's the, the, the last third of the night after that is going to be in America, so on and so forth. How is this? We don't, we don't do this part. Allah, he does not descend like anything in the creation. Rather, he descends in a manner befitting his majesty. And his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that he descends. And he said when he descends in the last third of every night. So therefore a believer, he believes in that. So we don't ask how that occurs. Rather we ask when. When is it? So that we can benefit from that. So a nuzul is from those attributes that we have been affirmed in the book and in the sunnah. They have been affirmed in the authentic text. And therefore the Ahlul sunnah they affirm them. In a manner befitting the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They do not ask how. They do not ask how. Rather, this one here, a person, he will say, when? As is mentioned in the narration. So that way one can benefit from that. When is the last third of the night? When is the last third of the night? So that a believer, he can, uh, he can benefit uh, and experience the fruits of this creed and call on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who believes that Allah he descends in a manner befitting His Majesty. And he submits to that and surrenders to that. He doesn't delve into how and, and the likes and try to calculate in his mind and figure out this reality. He doesn't, he doesn't delve into these issues. Rather, he submits to the text and he believes that Allah he descends in this portion of the night, every night, in a manner befitting His Majesty. And he says, the, and he says these, sta these statements, Man yadu'uni who is, who, who, who is calling on me? And this is a call from Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah is calling the, the believers to, to stand in this portion of the night, to be, to be awake in this portion of the night, to call on him in this portion of tonight. Man yes aruni Who is going to ask me so I can give him? This is from the best time to get your needs met, to call on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you have problems, if you have issues, you have troubles in your life, you're facing challenges in your life, from the best time to solve these problems and to find the, 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 the way out from hardships is to, is to be awake at this time when the people are sleeping. As-salatu bilayli wa nas niyam. To pray in the nighttime while the people are sleeping, especially in this portion of the night, whenever Allah He descends in a manner befitting His Majesty, and He calls on the people in, in this way, calling on them to call on Him and to ask Him and to seek His His forgiveness. And uh, Subhanallah, in the beginning of uh, Al Islam, whenever the Muslims are persecuted in Mecca, it was an obligation for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to stand in the night prayer, 
to stand in the night prayer. And the people of Nara, as they mentioned, the wisdom from that is because of the strength, the strength that one finds from standing in the night prayer. The physical and spiritual strength that one he will find in the night prayer, whenever they're facing this persecution, and and they're, and they're being and they're being tried by their tribesmen. Some of them are being tortured, and, and they're being they're being blamed, and they're being censored, and they're being persecuted. They're being harmed left and right, left and right. The, the one of the means to help deal with these problems here was to stand in the night prayer, was to stand in the night prayer, specifically in the last part, in the last part of the night. Specifically in the last part of the night. So the question is, when is the last part of the night? In the last third, huh? When is that? That Allah he descends to the nearest heaven every night. That Allah he descends every night to the nearest heaven whenever the last third of the night remains. When is that? When is the first... When is the first portion? We have to find when the first portion is and when the last portion is. Then we can define when the, decide when the third is, right? When does the when does the night begin? At Maghrib time. At Maghrib time. This is when the night begins. When does the night end? At, at Fajr time. At Fajr time. So when does the night begin? At Maghrib time or Isha? At Maghrib time. Sah. That's correct. Inshallah. When does the when does the night time end? At Fajr time. Or a sun, a sunrise. At, at Fajr time, at Fajr time. So the night is from sunset to dawn, from sunset to Fajr. This is the night time, from sunset to Fajr. You understand? This is the night time. So you calculate that time. You you find that time. Like maybe throughout the year it changes. Correct? The time of Maghrib and the time of Fajr changes throughout the seasons. So you you calculate that time and then you divide it into three parts and the last third is the portion that Allah he descends in subhanahu wa ta'ala in the manner befitting his majesty and a person he will strive to be found every night every night in some portion of that night in some portion of that night of that third of that third either either just before the fajr comes or an hour before or two hours before or the whole last portion or the first portion and then he'll rest again whatever is easy for him but a, a believer he will not let the likes of these these opportunities go by he will not let the likes of these opportunities go by he will strive against his soul to be from those who believe in uh, these narrations and strive to implement them and strive to implement them so the one who believes that Allah he descends in a manner befitting his majesty and then he sleeps on that this is uh, this is uh, a, ty a type of uh, uh, of uh, this, this is an issue. Any yani believer, he should not neglect this this great opportunity. He should not neglect this great opportunity to call on Allah and the last and the last third of the night every night for himself and for his family and for his loved ones and for the believers in general and for the believers in general to be from those calling on Allah and begging Allah and seeking forgiveness in the last portion of the night. This is something that is. That is that is very praiseworthy and 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 highly desirable, and highly desirable in the heart of every of every believer. That a believer he will hope to be from those who stand in the night prayer, and stand in that portion specifically, or as awake in that portion specifically, at least making istighfar and making du'a. I remember now a narration from Al Fudayl ibn Iyad, rahimahullah. He died in the year 187. He said, "If man lam yastafi an yaqum al layla wa yasum al nahar, fa fa inna hu mahroom, fa inna hu mahroom. Man lam yastafi an ya an yaqum min al layli wa yas an yaqum al layla wa yasum al nahar. Man lam yastafi an yaqum al layla wa yasum al nahar, fa inna hu mahroom. Kabbaratu khafiyatuhu." That uh, whoever is not able to stand in the night prayer nor to fast in the daytime, then he has been forbidden. He has been prohibited. He's been prohibited. And this is because his sins have shackled him and kept him back. His sins. And his sins have kept him back. So sometimes a person, he would hear the likes of this admonishment or advice. And then he will not be able to get up at that time. He will not be granted success to get up that time. And many times that which is holding him back from this great blessing are his own sins. 
are his own sins. Any of his sins will weigh a person down to where he's not able to raise his head. Well, he's not able to raise his head or to get his, the, the sheet off his chest. And it could become even more severe. Not only is he able to not raise his head for this great portion of standing in the not obligatory prayer in the nighttime, but even sometimes it gets so heavy on uh, some of them, they're not able to get up in time for the obligatory prayer of Fajr. So this is an indication that the sins, they have a, a, a foul effect on one's life. And uh, although this is something very dangerous and blameworthy, also bi'idhnillahi da'ad is something easy to treat and to deal with. And that is to look into one's self and to take himself to account and to have remorse for those problems that he was affected by before and those shortcomings that he was overcome by before and to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have strong determination to, to do good and to go forward. هذا وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم